All right, so uh, Javier came in hot. He's like, do you think you can really beat Jake Paul? And the answer is drama. Well, no, so Javier, so there's a question from one of our Cathy's that says, would drama fight Jake Paul with a year to train slash prepare? <clears throat> and then Javier was like, do you think you could actually beat Jake Paul? And here's my honest answer. It's going to make me sound like a bitch, but I'm going to be honest, is... I, I don't want to get hit in the head a bunch. So yeah. I don't, when I box, what do you do? I don't full on fight, spar. Because I don't want the fucking brain damage. I'm 36 years old. I've had plenty of concussions. I'm not doing it. Jake Paul is getting the shit beat out of him every day. But like is he even getting concussed? Wait, he's is it getting Jake concussed or Logan? For which sure. one are we talking oh, which about? Which one? Whatever. Both. One of them. But Jake. Jake more than Logan. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. Jake is sparring all the time. And I watch these guys spar every day. Not Jake and Logan, but uh, the people in the gym. They fuck each other up. <laughs> and I just, don't I don't you have the guys, balls. Don't, you know, in the gym, don't they wear like the head thing? It yeah, doesn't matter. It I doesn't mean, matter. I mean, AYSO soccer... Heading the ball causes yeah, yeah. long-term brain damage. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I mean, people still get knocked out with headgear on. It's still, it's probably worse for you. It's probably you can the take... dumbest thing you do in your life. Yeah, but I don't, I barely he, he get hit. hit ever. That's what I'm saying. So if He's I that fought good. him. He's that good. Simply, just yeah, He's exactly. Pretty boy Floyd. <laughs> pretty boy drama. No, no, I'm saying I barely spar. And when I spar, it's don't, not hard. Yeah, I mean, the only video we've ever seen is like beating up year six-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> and I sparred that kid again on Tuesday. Still whooped his ass. <laughs> Stop him out. But no, I, that's the simple reason. I think my competitive side says if... You just think you're very skilled. Uh, I just, I don't think Jake's that good. Oh. I just oh. think... Oh, let's TikTok that. I just... I, I just know, but where he I, said no TikTok. No, no, where I, where I, where I'll we give have Jake, to TikTok that. We're at the point of this podcast. We're going to TikTok that. Where I will give Jake the credit is he has balls. He... He's a willpower. He gets the shit kicked. I mean, he has probably had 15 concussions. Wow. I would guess. And he, unless his team is somehow... No, there's no way. He's sparring hard. And when he goes in a ring, like going in a ring with no headgear and fighting anyone is um, so fucking, he could get knocked out. He could get, you know, some like real brain damage. He's not scared of that. I give him props for that. Okay. Technically, as a boxer, I don't think he's that great. And if somehow I could be sure that I would dodge another head injury and fight, maybe I, don't, maybe I could beat him with a year of training, but I would never take the risk. Right. I'm just too much of a I like pussy it. at this point. I mean, no, I, I mean, I think you should be cautious of. I mean, for the listener, trauma. I've had a uh, fractured skull, profusely bleeding, bleeding brain, and been in a coma for four days. So I, I'm just worried that another one of those, and, and, and your I might brother be like, on camera on television. Had yeah, but a, he just knocked himself out and broke his neck. But, <laughs> but my my concussion was so bad that I it, I hit the back of my head. I got a concussion on the front of my brain from it bouncing. Oh man. And so this is skateboarding. I'm, yeah. So I'm just scared that like another one of so those. It's a, Do you think skateboarding is dumber or boxing? I think boxing. skateboarding is really dumb. Skateboarding is really, really dumb, but boxing is dumber. Because dumber. you guys is don't even boxing tie, the no. dumbest below football? I think football is probably dumber. Dumber than boxing? <laughs> Ooh, that's tough. I think <laughs> skateboarding is insanely dumb because kids do it and you guys are all like cool guys. So you don't even tie your shoelaces. No, no, yeah. The Ray Vans. What's that? I don't need shoelaces. But skateboarding is more like Russian roulette. Like you could skateboard your whole life and never hit your head once. No, but you can like break your ankle. Yeah, but that's fine. Oh, whatever. That's I mean, fine. people break their ankles playing basketball and shit. Yeah. It's like the same thing. You roll your ankle. Yeah. You get a couple stitches. But I'm you not... guys do those stairs, the f rails. Yeah. But the problem, the real problem is head injuries. That's what like can fuck up your whole life. Like bad knees, you know, or like, yeah, people tear ACLs, but they do that in all sports. Yeah, there's kids who played like high school track yeah. that have bad knees. It's yeah. just, if I'm being honest, skateboarders, you should wear helmets. Like boxers wear headgear, except for in the match. All other sports, they wear wear helmets. Skateboarding, you should wear helmets, but it's just so lame to wear helmets. That you can't even does. tie your shoes. Why would you wear a helmet? 
Where'd you get the shoe tie thing? I think that's a cool guy thing, right? No, we tie your shoes. When you're skateboarding? Yeah. That's just dumb. Not tie yeah, your I shoes. I think it's dumb. I, I feel like... <laughs> you don't when you're... I mean, if you're like a cool guy, maybe when you're like walking around, but no okay. one skateboards without their shoes tied. Okay. But there's my answer. All right. I wanted to... Um, I know we're jumping right into the news, but I, I was... Uh, on Friday, I had a series of meetings in downtown LA, like all, all like fashion retail people maybe four meetings, five meetings, uh, going to different people's offices. And these are all people I had never met in my life before. Like none of them. Yeah. And there's a saying like, uh, you know, if you're friends with a lot of Jewish people, Jewish geography, like, you know, you start naming, you go, you know, this person, you know, this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like, at the end of the day, like I, these are like five, six strangers I met, which is really tough for me to go in LA in yeah. fashion and not know someone. Yeah. But here, here I am, I met five new people. Yeah. And what's really interesting is it really does matter where you grow up, where you go to college and where you end up working. Not from a, what school or anything like that. Geographically, it really makes a difference on your life. Explain, what do you mean? So like, we grew up in the valley. Yeah. We went to school 10 miles away. Yeah. And then we chose to live and work in the same area. Yeah. So almost anyone I meet that's similar to me, Yeah. like from LA, never really left, you end up playing geography game and you end up realizing you have so much um, overlap of people. And instantly, it's because it's so funny because it's instantly everyone's disarmed. Like, oh, you know yeah, Joe? Yeah, I, I got it, I got it. Oh, yeah, you know Joe, that's great. Yeah. Doesn't even matter what I said anything after that. Yeah. I knew Joe and we're good. Yeah. It, it's pretty fascinating. And what's interesting, in high school, I was so obsessed with living in LA for yep. the rest of my life. Yeah. I did like the idea of going to school in New York and stuff like that and all that stuff. But like, I was like, you know what? I know if I live here for the rest of my life, I might as well go to school here and start building like relationships here. that are here. Yeah. And, and, and which is kind of anti what people tell you to do when you go to college, which is like expand, go, go elsewhere, like expand yeah, your network. Yeah. Go meet people all the world. But you know, I, I'll have to say just for someone that basically never left. But I yeah. think we hit kind of lottery in the sense of, both of our friends that we randomly met at USC turned into these like great networks. Yeah, yeah but no, yeah. but it's not even that. Like the five people I met on Friday, it's just, we were talking about literally high school friends. Yeah. It's just like people yeah. I haven't seen 20, 30 years. Yeah. We're literally like, it's not like I was name dropping like celebrities. I was literally like, you remember so-and-so yeah. from 1995? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know. Almost but I, I think what you're trying to say is basically like LA, it's a big business hub. Yeah. People from LA have LA roots yeah. and you're able to connect those yeah. roots and translate yeah. it into business. Yes. And it's pretty, po it's, it's like a cheat code. And I'm sure it's the same thing. If you grew up in- I'm sure New York's the same. New York- I want to say another thing that's very similar that I've thought about a lot because yeah. I've um, recently sh jumped industries. Yeah. It's also an industry thing. Yeah. Like if you're in the apparel business, you, after 20 years or however long you've been doing it now, you, you know kind of everyone in the apparel business. Yeah. And then if you ship shift to like the oral care business you don't know anyone you're like what the fuck like yeah. who is the guy with the brushes and yeah. who's the guy you know like the, well, yeah and what's funny is, 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 is <laughs> you do. simultaneously great point because i went through this like kind of industry shift and these are people that have been basically tech call it adjacent to me my entire life yeah and our paths never crossed mm -hmm. because i was so focused on this one industry but yeah, they were in like a different office in the same building literally yeah and and it, and and but with the you know geography game you you can catch up faster yeah that's true you know just because you're like oh i think i've heard of what you've done before or, yeah. you know whatever you know so and so from this school like whatever it is it's kind of powerful like i and, I, and i'm not saying this just because la i think if you lived in detroit and grew up in detroit yeah. And you went to school in Michigan and you came back. Yeah. Your network is going to be better than someone that just moved in town. Yeah. It's a good thing for our listeners to think about. Like, I think it's something you could sort of examine and yeah. say, like, where do I have leverage? Yes. 
you know, like whether it's like there's some people who like grow up and sort of do something similar as like their family business. Maybe they take it to the next level or they like, um, yeah, get like up with the times with technology. But like the basis of all of those relationships Dude. is so like, I'll just say I had a conversation last night. I met up with some game people because there's a game thing in town and just the what's a game thing. Um, Conference? I don't want to say exactly what it is. It's uh, is it like the Illuminati it's for games. Buyers from a big retailer. Okay. Are in town. Oh, okay, oh game pitching. is like board game. Yeah. So Not like the gaming. games industry. Uh, yeah, games like it. Okay. Yeah. You know, whatever stores. Um, and just overhearing them talk, I learned so much. Like so much that's like, oh yeah, of course. You yeah. know, like you just hear like how are certain games performing? What is good performance? Bad performance? Yeah. What makes how does Monopoly sell? What happens is when Monopoly this just happens? still crushing it? I didn't actually find that out. <laughs> but like things, things I would love to What's know. the greatest game ever, by the way? Ever. Not like something that was... You're talking Uno. It's got to be one of those. Is it like a Monopoly, Uno, Yahtzee? I'll Google it. Um, There's a game I'm thinking of. I think it's like... Jenga. No. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, I think that even last night, I didn't realize just how much I still don't know. Yeah. You know, even like, even I was so fortunate when we teamed up for Young and Reckless, you guys already had a head start. Yeah. And so I learned so much from you guys about yeah. like, just what normal is. I don't know. Like when you're talking to buyers, um, you might think that every t-shirt has to sell five units a week. And that's what everyone looks like. Cause you don't know, you don't see anyone else's selling, but when you know how it actually works and know how important placement on the shelves is and blah 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 it just helps you navigate the industry so yeah. much better oh yeah i mean i the amount of stuff i learn every day like you know I, we did the off price show in las vegas and uh if you're an outsider walking into this show yeah you're gonna look around and be like what the fuck is this disgusting place yeah literally yeah and then the the guy you know and every booth and I now know all these people. One guy's doing a billion. Another guy's doing a hundred million. Yeah. There's not a small company in this entire show. Yeah. Like we were the smallest company in that show. Yeah. And it's fascinating because when you think of fashion, you know, if you told someone in LA, name me a hot fashion brand, you know, they'll probably name some local brand that's popular that, you know, yeah. that everyone wears. And then, and now that I'm in this like weird world, I was talking to someone that runs sales for Nautica. Yep. They did two and a half billion in retail. Makes it's two and a half billion. They don't have a website. They literally do not have a website. And that's my point. <laughs> Even like my point is like, you can't walk into, like if you're, let's just say you're trying to start once again, like a toothbrush company. Your instinct would be to walk into a Target, look at all the toothbrush companies and say, okay, yeah, this one has a big shelf. That one, this must yeah. be yeah. what works. And you have no idea what's actually happening. No. And you have no idea. Someone might look really good because they're a hot e -com brand and they just went big with them, but it's not really working and the marketing team's freaking out. And then here's this other company that does a billion dollars a year in oral care and you, they don't look like anything. No. And like, it's just learning, knowing that information is not something you can read about in a book. No. That's only information that comes up, you know, over Experience. drinks at yeah. night or, you know, talking to somebody. I, I always tell you know, our team when we're, we're having meetings, I'll meet someone and be like, I'll literally be like cocktails with that person immediately. Yeah. Because you get two cocktails in someone, they're telling you. They sing yeah. like a bird. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I sing like a bird. You give me a couple cocktails, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. Yeah. We'll tell you everything you yeah. want to know. That's so, what this podcast is. Yeah, You're just you having tequila and singing like a bird. Yeah. <laughs> singing like a bird it should be the that title. Be of podcast. Yeah, yeah, sing like a bird. Sponsored five, by Los Yeah, five, five drinks. I'm just telling you everything that happened. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but like, it's it's so, it's disarming when you're not, you know, you're in a social setting. Yeah. People are just more likely to share. I mean, people share yeah. way too much. And, yeah. And, and in a good way. In a good way. No, but, yeah, but, no, but it's, I, it's I think, fun because like I have the same conversations with people. And I'm like, wow. Well, yeah. I, th I, yeah. I, I think yeah, people, right. the biggest challenge, and, and you may, you, you're probably experiencing this, experiencing this being in the, in the game business is there's not, in, especially that industry, it's not that big, right? Yeah. There's not like a million, you know, it's not like fashion. There's not like a million people no, doing no. fashion. There's like the three big dogs. Yeah. Like Mattel and whatever. Yeah. And then there's three quote unquote independent big dogs, like the, what are you memes and the whatever. Yeah. 
and then that's it. And then a bunch of people just trying to figure it out on Kickstarter. Exactly. And so I think like in, inherently there aren't a lot of people you can even talk to about your industry. Yep. So when you find someone that kind of gives a shit, yeah. like, oh my God, oh. Yes. they want to yeah. tell you everything. I learned so much. Yeah. And it's so, and like I said, I wouldn't have even known quite like to ask it. It's just stuff that comes out in a conversation. And I go, yeah, but how is, what are they doing? Or, oh, did you know that 50% of this brand's revenue comes from these two SKUs? The rest are in the Fake, store yeah. just based, and it's like, ah, oh, shit, of course. You know yeah. what? And I, you I, learn I, that, and you learn the game. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say it on air, but th there's something that I learned that is literally people are doing such big business based off of a retailer's like not wanting to move shit around. Yeah. You know, just, ah, yeah, there's your space. It's so convenient. Yeah, it's just convenient. Oh, and to change something in that many stores is so hard. I meet convenience and people, convenience CEOs every day. Yes. And I'm, I'm literally like, what does this person have? And then it's just literally convenient. Yes, it's that. It's literally like, ah, we don't want to fuck. I mean, I don't know. We have 3,000 stores. You think we want to change because that? Of fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, th that's actually an incentive alignment, right? So the CEO isn't the, isn't Zuck, mm -hmm. who owns 25% of the company. Yeah. So the incentives of Zuck is like, I'm going to torch 30 billion on AR. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. But if I'm right, I'm going to benefit so much. Yep. And I have all the voting shareholders to not always be CEO. Yeah. The CEOs of the companies you're talking about just get a salary. Yeah. And they're like, I don't want to do anything. Not to mention that, I'm not talking to CEOs of yeah. mass retail. I, I'm the game aisle is a little deal. Yeah. If you're Walmart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And for the record, that's not who I'm talking about. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So it's a buyer who it's even more of that. It's just like, I don't know. I don't want to fucking deal with 50 different brands sending their shit in late. I mean, it's not a, having it packaged but, but right. To, to, to not like just playing devil's advocate on it. When you are Walmart. Yeah. There's not that many people on earth you can do business with. Yep. Like Walmart, I know firsthand, it is the, one of the more stricter vendor compliance yeah. than anyone on earth. Yeah. So like, I'd rather just go to... Muhammad that we've been working with for the last yeah. 30 years. Yeah. Muhammad's going to get my shit on time. Yeah. Why would I give it to this young whippersnapper yeah. who doesn't know what he's yeah. doing? Yeah. He's going to fuck it up. And that's why that is a whole industry that has emerged. Yeah. And it's not just in my world. I'm sure it happens in a lot of other industries. Yeah, there's, brokers, is, um, yeah. there's just people that say, okay, I'm Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be <laughs> fucking racist. I know. Why? It, it sounded totally different coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Since you're the white Mohammed. guy from yeah. like Dick and just rifle it off when it's the white dude, like yo, Mohammed. <laughs> but anyway, I'm I'm Carl. Yeah. And so Carl Mohammed. So what I'm gonna do, I know how to do all the compliance. So yeah. I'm gonna go find all the startup brands yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm gonna and do their tax compliance. Five percent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And but that but is all that relationships. Also shows how much uh opportunity there is in these industries yeah yeah if you can actually penetrate and pierce the veil yeah be like hey well, well here's it's the just problem piercing is, that veil initially is so hard yeah because uh, it's, it's impossible but once you do right. yeah it's all relationships and you know there are in these wor uh, words mohammed in mine carl uh, there's carl's all over the place you know that there's like a mohammed money there's a mohammed for every retailer yes. in the world that just like retailers, you don't even know. There's like a a re, there's a Muhammad for Belk. Yep. Like Belk, who probably if you do not live in the South, you have never heard of them. Yep. They the do owner billions. of Belk listens to this podcast. Yeah, I'm just well, saying. Tell us who the Muhammad okay. is. Okay, <laughs> he's got a couple Muhammads. I've met them, and and they just they do like seventy five million. I don't even know, million. Should, don't even know should be a part of this. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it made, it's funnier. This is why this podcast is good because. Sing no like one bird. else is going to come on Muhammad. Sing like a bird. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, so my point is, that is all navigating relationships. Yeah. That's not, you don't learn that no. even at Harvard Business School. No, that's just. Well, well, it's funny is because like I'm around so many like all different types of walks of life. Mm -hmm. And like, I think, you know, in, inherently when you, you run a business, everyone's trying to figure out like. Why are like why are you in that position? Mm -hmm. Like they want to know why. Mm -hmm. 
for me, 100% is relationships. Yeah. It's literally like, make I make it very clear. That is why I'm in the room. Yeah. I have the relationship that you'll never get. Yeah. That's why you want to be next to me. Yeah. And that's it. And I think we're learning. And then when I've learned there's like the, the Muhammad network, it's fucking crazy. It's crazy. There's you people- call it a network. It sounds a lot different. <laughs> Don't call it a Mohammed network. <laughs> oh my God. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's, I, you know, I think my, I think look to, to give the listener, I think if we could package this in a way that's valuable to the listener. It's, um, that's like an unspoken leverage point that matters so much. Yeah. And like I said, you don't learn it in school. You, you don't read about it in books. Uh, and I think the question would be either a, where do you have some leverage, either geographical leverage, relationship yeah. leverage, industry leverage? Um, or if you don't, I mean, I'll say I, I grew up with zero of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I got pole in Akron, Ohio. Yeah. Not much, you know, that I can. Maybe you used to. LeBron moved. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I can tell you that if you don't have it at all. You can get it. You should think about where you want to get it. And, and then go the get in. it and dedicate yeah. to getting it yeah. and, and be focused on that. Because, you know, not that like, for instance, if Dom, when he grew up, wanted to... Happy birthday to the kids, by yeah, the way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mav and Dom. Yeah. And, um, Miles, yeah. and Miles. Three of the four Murthy boys <laughs> within yeah. a week. <laughs> you guys have some sort of ritual that you do? <laughs> um, uh, but let's say Dom said, hey, dad, you know, I want to be in the apparel industry when he's 18. You, He has... A screen printer, a manufacturer, a distributor, right away. Yeah. Um, Which, if you look at a lot of the hottest brands in LA, yeah, their parents came from the industry. Yeah, there's so much of that. Yeah, like it, which Even is cool. Even hot, hot new brands in any industry that are like kind of innovative, usually Comes, their family. Yeah. You know, my family owned. A, yeah, that was always the question when I was younger and the business started doing well. Be like, oh, so what? They literally always ask me, "What do your parents do?" Yeah. And when I was like, oh, my dad's an engineer, my mom's a small business owner on a travel agency. Like, People were very surprised that we had no clothing roots. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, if you're Indian, you probably have yeah. some yeah. background in the industry, yeah. which, you know, which is interesting. Like, yeah, I, I was just fascinated just sitting Friday, meeting five different people that I was shocked that I'd never met before yeah. in the industry. And we've all, and I, I was with um, um, uh, people that I work with and... I was like, it's it's insane how like that game, the name game, yeah, is so powerful, yeah, in disarming people of like, okay, oh no, it's so important, yeah. Like I, I tell D, I've told him many times. I was like, I, I feel like I have this gift where people tell me things they probably shouldn't be telling me, yeah, in a business sense, yeah, and it's the name game. Yeah. Where yeah. I just like, oh, yeah, we're, I know this person. Yeah. 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 And they just start, I'm safe. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really what it is. Yeah. It's like, it's a safe space yeah. to talk. Yeah. It's just, it's and funny. I don't share it on the podcast. So you can keep telling me all your secrets. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, it's an interesting point to bring up. I think it's good value for our listeners. And it's funny because I literally had that conversation last night. And today I was just thinking, like, God, there's like so much I don't know still, you know, like, I think my instincts are good. I think I'm a smart guy, but like, there's just the people, just the knowledge experience of how like, shit works, you know, that like, I, I, whenever I get to like a lot of these, um, you know, younger people that like dismiss older people in the industry, just mm -hmm. cause that's what you do. You yeah. think you know what you're talking about? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Man, I'll, every time I meet someone older in the industry, I get a nugget. Yeah. Like an incredible nugget. Yeah. Where it's like in the back of my head and I'm like, ah, shit. Not only that, but I feel that that is like almost, like I almost feel like the most innovative companies or the coolest companies are like the ones that take all of those nuggets from yes. old people and sort of give them a new twist yes that's like the perfect i mean formula. that's literally my business yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's the perfect it's literally formula. like me getting lectured there, there's a reason older why older people yeah. my there's entire a, life there's yeah. a reason why like 30 person old founders have 60 year old board members yeah for that exact reason yeah it's yeah, funny because that can I, I also think, be your worst enemy yeah but that combo look at, working like, well look at suck he has peter thiel mark and Dreesen. like they're not 30 year old guys yeah advising him yeah no no i think i think like 
ultimately, like, if you are smart enough to take advice from people that have come before you, you're kind of... You also have to, like, take it with a grain of salt, but be respectful. Yeah, yeah. yeah because it's think, a different era, and you just be like, okay, yeah, you're telling me things that... I mean, it's, so day, easy, it's yeah. so easy to find out. If you listen to it truly with, like, open ears, it's really easy to spot what's wrong with it. Yeah. Like, a lot of times, the older people know the, like, this is the way it is because it's just the way it is. It's just the way it's always been. It's the way it is. And, like, with your sort of younger brain, you can be like, oh, well, that's stupid. You just, you could do that. Yeah. You could offer it online as yeah. opposed to whatever. Yeah. And, like, that would, now all of a sudden, yeah, perfect fix. Yeah, I think the key is, like, and I see it being done repeatedly whenever a young person comes in. They... um they're so fucking arrogant yeah and they end up like turning people off where they actually don't even listen because they're so they're so brash and arrogant yeah and my view is like there's all these people around me that have been making gobs of money for decades yeah doing something very very different than what i've been doing yeah so you know what i'm visiting them at their 30 million dollar house yeah so I'm going to shut the fuck up yeah. and listen to what they have to say. Yeah, because there's such a, this is the other thing kind of that you were alluding to, is there's such a big difference between, like if you ask anyone in their 20s, like where do you think the money's at? Yeah. Who's making all the money? Yeah. You know, it, it, a lot of times it's Nautica doing $2 billion in sales. No one's going to name Nautica. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, there's, reality and appearance are a little different. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and I think that is, you only discover that when you start your business and you start your journey and you, yeah you start having the conversations and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Like the people you meet in LA, LA is a very interesting place because it's not New York where New York is like- Primarily finance. Yeah, and, and, and like you could, the pedigree of New York is very simple. You went to uh, Horace Mann or Dalton, you probably went to Harvard or Penn. What, those are. what? What is Horace Mann? The Horace Mann and Dalton are like these schools in New York City. The high school. Like Gossip Girls was after the, okay. these types of schools. Like they're the it schools. Everyone who goes to these schools goes to Harvard or Penn or, you know, like Yale, Princeton, whatever. Those schools, they end up in Goldman Sachs, venture, private equity, yep. and yep. they have a beautiful home in the Upper Epstein. West Side. And, you know, they have a house in the Hamptons. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I think like in New York, it, the pedigree is very, it's like very clear, like where they come from and how they end up. LA is like, like, you it's know. It's a hustler society. It is a very hustler society. Like yeah, I met two, I had, I had met on Friday with two like Iranian immigrants that came from nothing. Yeah and built these insane businesses over the last 30, 40 years. Yeah. And they're telling me their stories that when they came from Iran, their parents and this and that, like, I don't know, that's very unique to LA. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, well, that was an unexpected cool little tidbit. Yeah, yeah it's good. There you go. I have two things to say. Yep, okay. give it to us. One positive, one negative. Okay. okay, love it. One positive, Solomon Bird, who was on this pod. Yeah, I saw that. This guy, Sack fumble game yeah. one yeah. against San Jose State, number so 51. Sol Solomon was an intern? Yeah, he was, he was an, an intern. intern at Ghost. He okay. became close with all of us over yep. the last few months. He was on the pod when we were talking about Bronny. Yeah. yeah. And and what first I, play? I, I, no, 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 it was like, it was like uh, third, quarter. third quarter, I think. Uh, I have this like vivid memory when he was sitting in my office. I was like, I need a sack fumble game one. He was like, I got oh, game you. One. Game one. I thought he said play one. Yeah. yeah. And he delivered. Yeah, it's and exciting. He's an insanely, like, extremely intelligent guy. He's got so many interests. And I'm manifesting. He's going to be a first-round draft pick in the NFL. All All right. Shout out to Solomon. By the way, he goes to USC. I don't know if we said that. Yeah, USC. Yeah. USC, San Jose State. He's a starting uh, defensive lineman. And it was incredible. So shout out to Solomon. I just want to quickly, on top of that, say I just finished the Florida State. Florida. Florida. Oh, yeah, F FSU? No, no FU, University of Florida. UF. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. You can tell I'm not a sports guy. <laughs> uh, but so good. And as a, like, I don't watch a minute of college football. Yeah. And it was like, I was all riled up. Yeah, it's like, good. It's really good. Especially just, that is like, you know, that school was like, 
borderline criminal during those years. They kind of yeah. left Aaron Hernandez out of it, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. They left a lot of people that got arrested out of like it. That, that, to me, that was like the G version of like a rated X reality. Yeah, so it, I think you know, they wanted to look. I'm sure Urban Meyer was involved. You know, there's with the a film. lot of criticism about the documentary. Yeah. And be like, oh, this isn't the real truth. It's like, dude, nothing's real. Yeah. Everything we watch well, is fake. I mean, I want to get to our first topic to tell you nothing is real. <laughs> okay, what's your bad news? Yeah. Oh, bad news. Oh, ghost. <laughs> yeah. What? Ghost. What? They're big timing me. Oh, no. Yeah. What now? They're is it the boys? Are the boys involved in this? <laughs> Javier's on my side. Javier's on my side. So if you remember last Sunday yep. when we were congratulating D, yep. I said, is my Bloomberg station safe? He goes, you're completely safe. Yep. It's awesome. You've raised a lot of money. You get to sit here for free. Yep. Wednesday, Josh comes on the pod. We do this like softball interview about ghosts and talk how great they are. Oh, no. Yeah. Thursday, he tries to kick me out of my office. <laughs> and he, I said, if you try to kick me out of my office, I'm never going to see you again. Is your office and the Javier same office? Javier heard the whole conversation. What? Is he in the same office? Same office. <laughs> Javier heard the whole conversation. It was hot content. I didn't know that. And that I was, was like, yo, you raised $30 million and you kicked me out? Yeah. The what next, kind of like, energy the is next this? Week? <laughs> next day. <Yeah. laughs> You raised thirty million dollars. I was like buying in a fucking office. Yeah. You people. <laughs> what's what's so funny is uh, Josh afterwards. He's like, yeah, I talked to your brother about uh, you know potentially moving to the other side of the bu- a building. Uh, it didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> That's so that, you say. That series B energy is getting me nervous. <laughs> yeah. You need that uh, Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not fucking leaving. Uh, yeah. The game, you yeah. know. Yeah. Did so? Are you saying? I mean, I didn't. I said I'm not leaving. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> He's a Rosa Parks of the office. It sounds like you're staying. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it made me think about no. Here, here's the, actually the funny part, and I texted off here this. You know that Drake line, like you weren't with me shooting in the gym, yeah. the Kobe line. Yeah. I literally was shooting with them in the gym. <laughs> yeah, There's no were. employees. It was me, Dean, and Josh. Yeah. And you like also were the press. You know, you did the fluff piece. Yeah, yeah. I did the fluff piece. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. People change when they get money, you know? Yeah, big yeah. money. Josh, it went to his head. That's yeah. funny. That's good. Well, uh, you have to keep us updated on the... Uh, yeah, let's see if I get yeah. kicked out. Maybe we, record our next, maybe we record next week's uh, inter- uh, episode from your office. Oh, wait, well, actually, uh, to preview Wednesday, what do we have Wednesday? You have John coming? John and uh, the people from the NIL Tommy group. Okay, so John Turgeon, mm. H. Wood, he's heavily involved in making sure we win a national title nice so making sure all our guys get paid yep and so they they launched a podcast the tommy group uh, the tommy group podcast and uh another friend yogi rot is the host and they have all the the players the stars all that on it so john's gonna come on wednesday to talk about it so like in that university of florida yeah like none of those guys got paid no, they all got, got paid, paid. Oh. they just did it under the like cable. everyone got paid. That, that's, that's, why, that's why I don't like that. I watched like the millions? first episode. No, no, not millions. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, hundreds and thousands, not hundreds of thousands. No one got hundreds of thousands back. Like then. how much? Uh, how much career earnings do you think Johnny Football made? Post college? No, no, during college. No, he was signing autographs. Grand. He probably made five hundred grand, which is insane. He should have got made ten million. But then, if so Johnny the, Football was around this year. He'd he would make, make twenty million. Yeah, he'd make fifteen to twenty. I mean, those Drake easy. songs. The yes. guy was like the biggest <laughs> name in football for it, a minute. To me, I he always got, he got screwed. That's why I always felt that that like. Oh, let's get to this next topic because this topic really okay. Let me tee this up because we were in. We have a group chat. We have a group chat. Group chat. Yeah. And we you know send around articles and sometimes we kind of antagonize each other. You know we might send some Trump memes or some stuff. And I forget what was sent this week, but it was some sort of fake news type thing. And D wrote, if NVIDIA can fake their earnings, anything can be fake. Yeah. Now, NVIDIA is like the darling of business at yeah. the moment. Yeah. Um, they just had their earnings. They Stock went through the roof. They beat everything. They revised everything up. Everything's up. But I, I have no idea what's going on here. You're saying that there was some so, fake news here? There's a company called CoreWeave. Okay. Um, 
Core Weave is a customer of NVIDIA's. Okay. They uh, bought in this last quarter, apparently, according to Samantha Leduc. She's a like a Twitter, um, she's a reporter on Bloomberg CNBC. Said Core Weave is backed by NVIDIA because uh, they gave basically the credit to buy $2.3 billion in chips, okay. which is insane. Yeah. Insane. I've never heard of Core Weave in my life. Sounds fake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> BlackRock gave them a letter of credit to NVIDIA saying, hey, don't worry. We got the money. We'll make sure Coral Weave pays you. They took the chips. Yeah. Then, because they use, NVIDIA used the chips as collateral to make sure that like... You know, you know what Coral Weave's business is, right? What is it? Tomatoes? Cloud for chips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nothing. Cloud for chips means nothing. <laughs> this is a fucking Peloton. Cloud for Sing chips. Like a bird. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me, yeah. Let me tell, tell you something. You know what's not in the cloud? <laughs> fucking chips. Okay. I knew if D actually knew what Core Weave did, I knew he'd lose his mind. Yeah, it's scam. <laughs> this is a scam, ladies and gentlemen. Scam. <laughs> Let me tell you how big the scam goes. Cloud for chips. Okay, oh, cloud my, for chips. That's like D's worst nightmare. <laughs> Using you tell them it's the cloud two. for X and yeah. Okay. So they end up, uh, you know, Blackstone's giving some, you know, letter of credit. Okay. The chips got some loan against. Blah blah blah. Okay. Nvidia beat on data center revenue by 2.3 billion, which is exactly what Corvi was. BlackRock, the kind company yeah. that's helping that clouds for chips, such an innovative concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Owns 182 million shares of NVIDIA. So you think it's a big Ponzi? Uh, that's a little bit I mean, of a pump. I don't think, I know. So uh, did, you guys, did you guys listen to All In at all uh, over the weekend? I, 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 I listened it, to half of it. I had it did on, you, but it was in and out. Did you get to the NVIDIA part? No. I thought they did an excellent job of explaining that... It's a Ponzi? No. When, when, you, <laughs> when you have a company like NVIDIA, insane margins, insane growth, do you think other people aren't going to compete with them? Yeah. Like, do you think Google and Amazon and Apple, Tesla are just going to throw their hands up and say like, no, you won. Yeah. That was basically like the takeaway. Yeah. Like they're going to come after them. So these margins are going to compress. And it's basically being. Well, especially so if they're saying? fake. No, saying no, no, I'm saying they're fake. <laughs> Separate... What is Core Weave? We've never heard of any. No one's heard of this company ever. No one. You I, know, only, I heard it on All In. That's exactly. Uh, <laughs> I was like, damn, I didn't know this. Core Weave <laughs> buys $2.3 billion for chips. of NVIDIA chips. Cloud for chips. I'm looking it up. I'd ra if, 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 if they said Frito Lay bought $2.3 billion of chips, I'd believe that over that yeah um this is a ponzi oh yeah, yeah jensen might be in trouble well, well i think, I think is a, a good short he, he here's <laughs> here's what i actually believe i believe this is happening everywhere it's just just one of 500 things where it's this is happening at a trillion dollar publicly traded company where the game is fixed it makes it harder for me as just like semi-intelligent person to fucking accept anything at face value that's why i got so mad about people criticizing the florida gators documentary oh it was a like a fun you know marketing program for urban meyer and tebow it's like yeah of course yeah who cares about that this is a trillion dollar company no my point is like <laughs> if why are people criticizing this Netflix documentary when we know publicly traded companies are just falsifying yeah, yeah everything's fake yeah uh, let me just read you. Core Weave. <laughs> <laughs> Is it cloud for chips? Did I get that right? It's a specialized cloud provider <laughs> yeah. delivering a massive scale of GPUs on top of the industry's fastest and most flexible infrastructure. Exactly. It sounds like a porn hub. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy to me is that like no one's questioning some random ass company bought $2.5 billion. No. But also <laughs> what's crazy to me is that this is the hottest company today. And NVIDIA? they had to play yeah, yeah. some games. And they're still like yeah. juicing some stuff. But this is kind of like what we talked about in the intro. We don't have intros. Well, in the beginning, the <laughs> new intro, the, <laughs> the, 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 the banter part is this is also what happens when you're connected. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Oh, I went to high the- school with Jensen. Jensen, give me oh, the two and a half. Come on, Jensen. Yeah. You know the guy over there at Black Rock, right? <laughs> yeah. Just do the line of credit thing you said. Yeah. Bam. Stock through the roof. Jensen gets a yacht. Yeah. Jensen can buy the company that makes the yacht. But I think what, <laughs> what you're uncovering is basically like, this is how it's existed forever and continues to exist. Yeah, nothing's going to yeah. happen. NVIDIA, Core Weave, everyone's going to get NVIDIA's going to stay a trillion dollar company. I actually think they're going to decline. I sure, actually believe they're, they're margin instead compression. Instead of $1 trillion, they're $800 billion. They're down 20%, yeah. right? Like Maybe. Core Weave probably goes public. Everyone gets rich. Core Weave might be tough. Cloud for chips sounds pretty sketchy. Seems like they know the right people, though. <laughs> I mean. I'd be able to juice that thing up. And, <laughs> um, wow. Okay. I mean, just wow. It just it blows my mind that I could see if we were talking about Nikola or whatever yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but like this is the hottest company you still can get a little extra juice in there yeah that's the reality i also think like even though this feels like shady I, this happens non-stop this type of stuff of course oh, this is just par for the course and yeah. this is at the highest scale yeah okay well it's all about who you know ladies and gentlemen uh instacart's got an ipo coming yeah. yeah. It's, is it IPO season or what? People just sort of... They just got to get the shit out. They, they filed. So it's probably a September IPO. But I looked at whatever was publicly uh, published and this company's profitable. Yeah. It's not that bad. They're going to do... They did 400 million, I think, in profit what? last year. And they did 400 million in profit in the first half no, of this year. No, 240 in the first six months. 240, sorry. Yeah. But that's a real business. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. And or do, I think, do you believe in face value or do you think the decimal points are going to get moved once it goes public? What do you mean? You think they're mm, core weave? Core weave could have been. <laughs> yeah, they might core weave you. Core weave might be in there. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you know, we don't know. It doesn't matter. What was the revenue for 400? I think two and a half billion. Yeah, 2.5 billion for 2022. And 1.5 for the first half of I mean, that seems like a great and average business. basket size is over 75 bucks per, really? per Instacart. That seems like a great business. That's really interesting because like, do you guys do delivery groceries? Instacart, nonstop. You don't use Amazon Fresh. No, we use. Oh Instacart. wow, that's interesting. Do you? I do little stuff here and there. You know, I, I'm still like, I don't Postmates. have a family. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm like getting some eggs and some fucking. Yeah, we use bagels. Amazon Fresh. We used to use Instacart. I don't know why we switched. They go but to Whole like, Foods, right? This is a perfect example of a company that was bloated in 2020, 2021 in terms of. Their cost structure and their revenue didn't match. And they figured it out and they became profitable. IPO it. And I'm very impressed. And Apurva, who's this uh, founder, he's no longer the CEO, but he's the founder of the company. I'm friendly with. I did a Coachella run with him. Yeah. Nice. Happy for him. Yeah. That, Com- I mean, company was valued at 40 billion. I think it'll IPO probably at like 18, if I had to guess. I said 13 is the last value. Yeah, I think I think they're going to get the, the, the uh, bump. The pi- uh, yeah, the bump because of profitability. profitability. Yeah. It's great. Value is what? It 40? was, uh, I think the last private round was $13 billion. I think they'll get a bump because they're profitable. And you said four, was it the $400 million in profit for last, the quarter? Last year. Yeah, last year. Well, good for them. I mean, I, I can't really, especially when you come straight out of Core Weave. Yeah. This feels really legit. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. living <laughs> fucking eggs and yeah. vegetables. Checks out. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, how about this? Uh, one the of the core weave might be the biggest. <laughs> I I I'm good at calling you, out bullshit. Do you think you core weave's a bigger are. fraud than Peloton? Yes, way bigger on another <laughs> level. Because Black Rocks involves. What's the other one that you used to go hard on? Was it Snowflake? Snowflake. So in the Instacart uh, S1, yeah, they went from like 13 million of uh, business to Snowflake to 25 million to 53 million. You're talking NVIDIA. No, no, it's Snowflake. Instacart, Instacart using Snowflake. Got it. As a, a software. Yep. Got, it, got it. Got it. And then last year they dropped down to 18 million. Yeah. Cause so you should we short Snowflake? Yeah, because you don't need it. Wait, what are they doing? It's at the core weave of SaaS. But did Snowflake ever turn around? It wasn't. No, the stock's great. Is it? Yeah, the stock's doing great. But it's, when you see Instacart, which is a massive business, 
reducing their snowflake yeah. revenue. It's a good sign. Well, a bad sign. Bad today. sign for yeah. snowflake. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, no one knows what these companies do. No one can explain to me. It's been years. No one can explain. Oh, to me I'm saying like, like from 2022. It fell off a cliff in 2021. At the end of 2021. What's the stock price right now? 130, 150? 152. Yeah, that's still reasonable. But but Instacart telling in their S1 that it was a positive sign that they reduced their snowflake spend. Yeah. Yep. Uh, December 23rd, it was 350. I think we were talking about it back then because it was kind of like yeah, skyrocketing. Yeah, yeah. It was like, what is this? It got up to 350, plummeted. Now they're doing well by the new standard. Okay, but, love it. So next thing is another topic that is very big um, in sort of the post-COVID world, I would say, is um, retail theft. Yep. And especially when earnings time comes around, you hear a lot about retail theft and, and you hear it from places like uh, CVS and Walgreens and some people have closed stores. I think Target and Walmart and those people have mentioned it. Yep. Um, like I said, store closures in certain areas. It's It's been a very, very big issue. And, and there's actually really big dollar amounts attached to it. But there's some new uh, retailers that are also kind of sounding the alarm that they're having these same problems. Yeah. So Dick's Sporting Goods was the big one this past week announcing their full annual earnings will be impacted because of ele elevated inventory shrink. So this is like Walgreens is reporting this, Macy's, Target. Uh, if you go to a Walgreens, like in a city like San Francisco, most of the drugstore is locked up. Yep. yep. Um, there's only two aisles of essentials that are even available for in-person shopping. Uh, the rest are either under, you know, kiosk or employees have to bring you the items it's obviously like insane how many people are stealing things every this day. might be your actual biggest competitor yes mm -hmm. yeah the real ghost <laughs> <laughs> we'll make your shit disappear maybe it would be an organized crime yeah that, you might have to you might have to look into that but yeah you know it's yeah. funny uh i put in one of our chats with d something happened i forget what and i was like pretty bummed out and i was like i think i'm just gonna go steal today yeah it'd be a rush you know and you're not gonna get in trouble yeah exactly. <laughs> That's gonna like, just go get a louis bag whatever yeah. just walk out <laughs> i actually had that thought the other day i went to a target and i took a bunch of our like game concepts and i put them all on the Should shelf I just go steal we're not really stranger <laughs> games from target well that doesn't no, help you no that doesn't help steal the competitors <laughs> um <laughs> so steal all the other games yes i yes. really wanted to steal last week although <laughs> i don't know because then they technically have to go buy more maybe steal ours <laughs> yeah. yeah um and I put all the games on the shelf and I was taking pictures like, oh, this is what the shelf could look like, whatever. And then I was walking out and I was like, oh, shit, I have a bag full of games. They're going to freak out on me. And then I literally had the thought of like, oh, no, they, they aren't. Fuck. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, you, they don't even, they're not even allowed to stop you. Yeah. And, and I just confidently walked it's out. racist like, if they no, stop you. Yeah. Nobody said anything. So, <laughs> But um, I think the crazy thing to me is that it's gotten to the point where it's like on companies like earnings yeah. calls. That's, like, that's wild. Yeah. Like imagine the amount of theft that Target has every year or Walmart has every year. It's just, in the billions. But just like imagine like during normal times. Yeah. Like 2016, I'm sure their theft was insane. But you never hear about it. Yeah. The fact that it's now reaching numbers that's like worth mentioning, yeah. that it's affecting your business is so, just I mean, so, so crazy. How do you fix that? Because like you ha the only thing that can change is... I think they're purposely doing it to try to get legislators to be like hey can you help us i don't think they're purposely who you think dick sporting goods is no stealing i think target is telling the public like oh, hey yeah, of course we, we oh, lose yeah, yeah. two billion a year on theft like can you guys do something about it yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, but the thing is is like i i don't know local politicians aren't smart enough to react to that they're dummies like your local city council person in your community is a moron but isn't it all da's I have a district attorney that wants to come on. Well, last time he did that, it didn't work out. He's well. running against Gascon. He's the opposite. He better, want, okay. he better want law and fucking order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Um, he doesn't? He, no, he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wants more crime. Um, isn't it just mainly a decision of to prosecute or not? 
like if 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 we went back to like you get caught shoplifting, you are arrested. But there's still laws that like local laws that need to say that yo, you can't steal any. If you steal anything over ten dollars, you get sent to the chair. No, it's not question. Question. My question. You can steal up to <laughs> Is that nine- old spice. Shock them. In California, <laughs> you can steal up to nine hundred bucks and not go to jail. Is yeah. that a new law? I don't know if it's new, but I know that's the current law. Yeah. It's just wild. It's just when you have these videos of broad day, yeah, 40 people running into a store and clearing out a St. Laurent store. I mean, and think about how much $900 is. At a Walgreens, it's the whole aisle. At a Walgreens, it's the whole aisle. It's yeah. literally everything. I'll take everything. You can't do anything. Fuck off. God, I'm only, only got 700 bucks. <laughs> Imagine. He takes uh, 700, puts it in his car. I have $700 worth I of Trident two, gum. I have $250, and like, $200 of credit left. Colgate. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> um, it's just crazy because that was happening during COVID or during like kind of like during the- Do you the... think families are actually just showing up to convenience stores and be like, hey, I'm just going to steal 500 I've, today, 500 I, tomorrow, 500 I, the next I've day? I've said this before. I think you should. I mean, I'll be honest. If Wouldn't I the was- law doesn't, You could do anything you want. If like, Cora, Cora Weave is stealing- Yeah, if I- If I was, is stealing, I, you should steal too. Cora Weave- What's yeah, worse, yeah, Core Weave? That's kind of the what do you theory. think, the scam of Core Weave or stealing from Walgreens? Core Weave's worse. I have a problem. Two and a half billion in Core Weave. I, yeah, here's the thing with stealing. I think the law should change. It should be under 50 bucks. You can steal whatever you want. That's fine. I have a problem. 900 is too much <laughs> money. The problem, here's the problem. Everything that we buy would just be $51. Yeah. They just read you the You go price. buy a pack of gum yeah, yeah. and back 51 bucks. Okay, but if it's a 30 pack for $51, I'm okay with that. It's like Costco. Everything's 50 bucks. So literally everything would just be Instead Costco. Instead of like a dollar store, it's a $50 yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a $51 store. <laughs> but just, that's what I think has to happen because none of this shit is working. Pass I me think that honestly, I think honestly, I'm trying to think about it. If I was like <laughs> just getting by, you know, living in a studio apartment, why wouldn't you just go to CVS and grab your stuff. Yeah, look, you know, if you lost your job, Kathy's, come on over to California, pick up a nice little outfit, get a little deodorant. Yeah, it's called the Ghost Street Team. <laughs> 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 Just go out and steal shit. That's our interview, you know. How much yeah, how fast are you? <laughs> but you I'm actually curious, math. like, in if you went to the CVS right here on La Cienega, yep. and you just picked up a deodorant, you picked up a soap, and you picked up uh, nothing. Nothing would happen. You just walk right out and say, "Hey, you I'm taking this." No, you. Just, I, yeah. I, I can put two, three, three things in my pocket. No, what, what if, if you just don't even do that? You just I walk think one hundred percent. I think they are. I told, think you have to be crazy. Javier, to. can you do that for us? Can we video it? <laughs> would you be willing? Just walk in, take yeah. out. <laughs> I think and video I, it. I mean, look. I think they're told do not intervene. I think they're told that because it's not. It's so a, why is anyone paying? That's the risk. Yeah. Right? I, I don't I think that it's just the social contract of like it feels weird to steal. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing separating every CBS just being a freebie, free sample. I have sale. no idea why anyone would I pay. mean the only thing the only thing that's left, the only way this problem actually gets solved, which is crazy, is the Amazon Go stores. Which is you have to scan to, to get, get in, in and they automatically debit you. Yes. You yeah, say, yeah, yeah. steal yeah. it. Go ahead. I got your fucking credit card, yeah, you moron. Yeah, yeah. You run out. Yeah, you like, right get the notification. Fuck. fuck. <laughs> they got me again. But that's your only shot. Because like, you have to scan to even be allowed in. So there's literally like a turn okay. style type thing. You know what's interesting at CVS and Rite Aid as well is that the- Rite Aid went bankrupt. Yeah. The glass is only for the pharmacy. Because <laughs> stealing. Because that big pharma is protected. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't steal the drugs. Yeah. Well, obviously, no one should steal oxy. Yeah. I started watching painkillers. Yeah. yeah there's a scene in there that'll show you why the yeah why it's locked, <laughs> locked up. up. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, it's pretty insane, and uh, I think it's just really crazy that it's just normal now. Yeah. Like I'm sure if you in work, my day when we used to steal. We were you rebels. Got, we were rebels. You actually probably got an adrenaline rush. Yeah, it was like like I had to do a lot of <laughs> trickery no to steal something. Rush stealing now. I used to like there's you know. Like, they took all the fun out of it. Yeah, it's just normal now. You know, I had to like sprint out the door and I had to like <laughs> make up stories. I wonder, like, if you work at the whatever that is, CBS or Rite Aid, that's like for instance, Beverly Connection. Yeah, Los Angeles Beverly. 
I'm picturing, because that seems even a little nicer. I'm picturing like no. Fairfax and Sunset. So yeah, I could, that's my neighborhood. Exactly. Friday. Exactly. So I'm. <laughs> that's just scary. What do you think's going on there at three in the morning? So the one thing. Yeah, they're not. You're not doing a god. I'm shocked that thing is open 24 hours. So put it like this: we wake up quite early, so we're walking around the neighborhood. We're getting a bagel. We're just walking around. Sometimes oh, I need to go to Rite Aid. <laughs> they don't even open the door facing the sunset side yeah because they know what's gonna happen yeah <laughs> you they make you walk all the way around yeah and man the characters that walk into that right aid i've been going to that right aid for 20 years yep but it, why is it characters why aren't normal people just walking out no there's no normal yeah maybe wait what no i'm saying why aren't normal uh, people just walking out with this hey, dominic all, what do you want those toys all it is, Chris, is uh, go for it yeah, yeah. <laughs> run dominic run i'll meet you out front <laughs> It's um, <laughs> it's just the social contract. That's all. Yeah. It's just it. It feel it's wrong to steal. That's it. Yeah. If that breaks down, right aids are just fucking government uh, <laughs> contributions. You know, it's like Trump throwing paper towels. <laughs> uh, okay, what's going on with TikTok? We have an article here about TikTok. Um, you know how it may uh, dominate the. You know, we're getting into back to school time. Yeah. A lot of uh, young people do make their buying decisions based on TikTok. It, this is a staggering number. Okay. $94 billion is spent for back to school for college students. Just college? Yes. Average student is spending $1,300, sli slightly up from last year. And the reason why I think this is so fascinating is... I was uh, on TikTok. You, I got served all the uh, sorority, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the rush kind of week. Alabama rush. Or whatever. But it's every school now, right? Yeah. Every school girls are dancing, doing a thing. Yeah. Like if I'm, some of the schools started three, four weeks ago. Yeah. If I'm watching these girls during rush, you know, the first week of August, and then my school starts in September, I can't imagine the impact that has on your purchasing. Yep. Like you're watching someone that maybe looks like you and you're like, oh, I kind of dress like that. And then yep. you're you're picking up clothes the week before, the two weeks before you go to school and you're watching the rush. Yep. And I mean, rush on TikTok is in America probably the biggest fucking thing. Yeah. Like for that time for period. That, for that three week period. Yeah. It's so powerful and influential. I'm actually shocked more brands haven't just like infiltrated that rush week yeah yeah it's like i mean it must have a hundred billion views yeah i'm surprised this year actually because last year it became a trend that you couldn't have really guessed yeah but this year you could have totally obvious. been prepared yeah yeah and how's everyone a good dancer i think they're putting their best foot forward they're putting the no, three but they're or four. doing like cartwheels yeah i think i think but there's also like a whole houseload of these i know yeah but like i think <laughs> dancing like, blondes let, let's say there's 75 dancing blondes <laughs> yeah. they put three to actually Up do front. the flips and, and so like, take your eyes off of the shitty ones in they're the all coordinated they're all flawlessly like doing yeah. moves yeah it's dope did Haley like do that stuff not the dancing sorority. but was she in like rush week and all that yeah, yeah she did a sorority a lot of her friends all that that crew was yeah all... i mean her crew fit the Profile. It's just I so don't think they could have danced. Want, now they, like, no, they could not have danced the no. way these yeah. girls are dancing. It's no. just because of TikTok. I know now I'm girls. curious they about it. Dance. I don't understand it. It is. I would say like it is just n knowing because I went to USC. It's like it's like Mean Girls on steroids. <laughs> and, but like in between classes, they just they all hang out. They have parties. That's no, just it's your not in posse. between classes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more of like it's nighttime. Yeah, I, or you lived at the house. Wait, what's your question, drama? I'm just trying to I look. I just don't I know understand. this culture and I have a lot of friends that were in the culture that I was not able to experience. So then just give me the quick like for dummies rundown of like what happens if I go to USC and I'm a pretty blonde girl and I get accepted into one of these. You get recruited. Yep. Uh, oh, you get recruited. Yeah. Like if they they're literally like if they know you're an incoming freshman. Do they and, like look at the list? Like how do they spot Well, them? like a lot. Dude, like a school like USC, it's like 25 high schools that feed half the fucking school. Yep. Right. It's like, friend of friends. So yeah, they know. Okay, okay, okay. So then you come in and then is that that's like 
essentially that's your whole social life on lock. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is. For serves. your four years at school. And those are your girls. Those are your girls. If you're in a frat, those are and your I guys. Know the guys and like, kind of, I, I know the guys side well because I have a lot of friends that were at the elite fraternities at USC. And you I, kind of beef with the other ones or no? Uh I yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, maybe. Why not? Okay. But um it's a very exclusive uh and you pick it based on like, oh, this one fits my personality the best? Yeah, I think it's personality, it's socioeconomic, it's how you look. Yep. It's yep. all that. It's and why like, do they all know how to dance now? Is dancing a requirement? That's what I don't no, know. No, no, I, 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 I don't I, know that I don't answer. think they all know how to dance. I think, <laughs> look, a lot of women grew up dancing. Yeah. Did gymnastics, did ballet. They know how to dance. Yeah, okay. okay. Like a high. So that's just an after so, effect. Yes. A, a you're pretty, funny, you're blonde, and a of course, fact, you know course, how to dance. Yeah, yeah. A fun <laughs> fact, uh, personally, yeah. my fantasy football league that I've been with my best friends for over 15, I think 10, 12 years, it's called Brown Town Country Club. Yeah. It's five SAE white guys. SAE is the most exclusive at USC. fraternity at USC and five brown guys. We call it Brown Town Country Club. Okay, I was gonna say, where's the brown? Where are the browns? I know, I know. I thought it was five. The, the, the UPS so five white guys, white guys, and they invited <laughs> and you. And it's like, a very racial chat. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a racially charged chat. Yeah, we talk it. about the whites. We talk about the browns. Oh, you guys kind of. Yeah, yeah. We all hit butt heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. We have MAGA guys. We have non MAGA guys. That's uh -huh. good. Beauty. Okay, got it. Okay, and then you. So you kind of have like lifelong friendships out of these things. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And right. I wasn't allowed to any of their parties. Really? Yeah. Oh. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, anyway, I agree. And it's rush time. Everyone's <coughs> dancing. And I do think huge mar marketing opportunity. Yeah. Um, and I think that if you could really do a study of like how many young people's, forget back to school specifically, how many young people's buying decisions are made via TikTok. Oh. I think it's probably a staggering number. It's staggering. Yeah. I think it's every, I think it's everybody. And it's also just, it's a different age. So like when, um, you know, a decade ago or a little less, it was um, Instagram, but it was a lot of like ads yeah. so you could see, you know, and there's all these companies that blew up off of um, Instagram ads and you could see like, yeah, X amount of my sales comes from our it's ads. It's organic with TikTok. TikTok's organic, but I think that it's, I think the buying and music listening and just culture decisions are, I think even like the movies people watch. I think basically everything at this point. Any decision people make, yeah. literally political too. <laughs> Did you hear, speaking of TikTok and blowing up and music decisions, apparently, uh, what's his name? Richmond, North of Richmond. Oliver Anthony. Yeah. Turned down a $10 million deal. I believe He turned you. a deal down and he criticized Fox News. He criticized both sides. Both sides. Yes. On end. Yes. Your and side his, too. Yeah. His accent is very different than what he's saying. Yeah. It was it. He speaks very normally, but he tried to act like he's a he's like southern the Chanel guy. of country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I consumed all his content, so you can't get me on this. No, but I'm saying I was impressed that he he criticized both sides, yeah. and they played his thing at the, debate, at the debate. And instead of being like, "Damn, that's crazy," they played my song. You the guys, debate. boy Vivek is a clown. He got the biggest bump from the debate. That's though. fine. Number Good one, he's more D's boy than my boy. D, I don't mean to leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. I just want to be honest here. It's okay. Um, and I saw nothing every, but every Vivek Indian person on and meets is voting for him, so he, I, he's getting used to it now. All I saw was <laughs> Vivek Vivek uh, wins the debate. No one can say his name right either. It's amazing. But I heard he won the, the all debate. In, the All In podcast did a thirty minute segment on him, and they none of them could say his name right. No, they said I heard he won the no, debate. I heard they Vivek all kept saying the same the name wrong. I know how to say his fucking name. I heard Vivek won the debate. His name's not Vivek. <laughs> Look, let me just say this. And for someone, this is all I'm saying. It's for someone who didn't watch the debate. All that I saw in the yeah, media yeah, yeah. was Vivek won, won the it. debate. I watched it. He won it. So no objectively, a, I mean, have you? He knows how to play the crowd. He's that smart. He knows those dumbass. Taglines. Have you seen his business dealings? I think it's Trump VV. Who cares about his business dealings? I He's Trump. Tr exactly. And Trump is president. <laughs> Trump is president. So I, what's the problem? I think it's Trump <laughs> Vivek 2024. <laughs> you can't say his name either. I think Viviki <laughs> goes. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think no I, one can say his name right. I, listen, I think Vic, Vic Vic wins the. Um, I think he's 
vice president. <laughs> He's a, his business is like totally fraudulent. So? So is NVIDIA and everyone celebrates them. Is, What's the is difference? Is anyone's business even real these yeah, days? Yeah, who's, who's doing anything <laughs> Only right the now? unsuccessful ones. Yeah, exactly. Um, it do doesn't matter. That, don't he, you think VP? I, I don't think he beats Trump. Yeah. I don't think he's VP. I think Trump. I think Trump doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't need a VP. <laughs> what but if he he, he's going to get it. I think what Trump. What if he did that guy? Like, ah, fucking Melania. I think, I think Trump picks him he as the VP. He should be Baron as the VP. He's not old enough. How do you have it's, to be the VP? I don't think it's an age. There's no age. You, you, you succeed the president if God forbid something happens. Oh. Oh, that's you true. think the V. I actually don't know this answer. I, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, I don't think you can no. have a 19 year old as your fucking VP. That'd be sick. <laughs> Just have like he could Aiden pick like, Ross, Kyle yeah, from yeah, literally the, from Nelk Boys. Yeah, like it's me and him, dude. Yeah, we're fucking going for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how about this? A company bought eight hundred million dollars worth of land in California um, to build a new city. So, so I purposely. No. Oh. Did you, sorry, what are you gonna say? Well, I don't know this story because I wanted to ask. Yeah. I have read the Peter Thiel book where, you know, he wants to start a city. There's a lot of uh, Silicon Valley uh, libertarians types that want to build their own. Want to build their own. Country, city. city, yeah. Yeah, and start from scratch. Uh, is that what this is? or what? So there's two interesting things about this. So the first is it leaked about two months ago and we talked about it on this podcast that everyone thought it was Chinese that the there's this land being mm. bought by this air force base oh this is the same thing yes yeah and they're like who are the buyers we can't find it like who are these people oh and they it's found like it. is this a CIA like is this a foreign government is like who's doing it and uh, it leaked this week that it's a bunch of Silicon Valley guys any famous ones or yeah everybody oh yeah everyone uh, Mark Andreessen mm. Peter Thiel. Um, How I, was, I, was actually, I was actually told, I was free to say, even though he wasn't allowed to, he, he didn't want to be in the news articles so we're breaking it, uh, Neil Metha. Wow. Is he in on it? Yes. Oh, boy. So Neil. they bought this land. Lauren Powell's Neil's in the Illuminati. Yeah. This oh, is Illuminati. he's definitely deep state. Yeah, he this is, is Illuminati, yeah. It's all deep state. Like, Silicon Valley deep state is like a different thing. What's going on in this state? A lot of orgies? So you know what's going on? You know the whole plan then. <laughs> I, I've I've gotten some inside baseball on this and they just said like they bought the land in 2017 and it's been a political nightmare to even do anything. But are they, okay, they but what's the intention? Do Fuck they want to start nightmare. a community? What's a fucking that? No, one... the, the intention is exactly what you described. They're which all is world. Like, just hey, one big member's tent, huh? Yeah, big member's tent. <laughs> you know, like do everything without the laws of like you can't expand housing yeah. in San Francisco. You can't do this. Like, let's just, it's only 60 miles outside of San Francisco, which is not that far. Okay. So can you build a city that's 60 miles away from like a great metropolitan city Yeah. and make it affordable, make it- It's not uh, gonna be affordable. Get the fuck out of here. Make it no heroin, uh, no painkillers, no Sackler. Oh, so it's gonna be a conservative state. Why is liberal <laughs> Sackler? Sounds pretty conservative to me. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of rules. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like. Cool. I've actually I mean, been I'm told this it. this exact story to do it in a foreign country. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah, know yeah, a company yeah. like that's doing do, it. Do it in Mongolia. I know someone like, that's hey, doing it in the Mediterranean, do it in, like in a country where like yeah, you there can are literally no do whatever anyway. you want. Yeah, yeah. I'm into it. Sounds like Malibu. I wonder. <laughs> Malibu is exactly this. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's uh, not, Malibu's not that nice. Uh, well, I don't know what part of Malibu you're going to. Malibu's fucking what great. What do you mean? Like, what do you miss? What do you, yeah, you miss in Malibu? You want to live in the farmland of fucking San Francisco? Fresno or wherever this is? I mean, how many establishments are there in Malibu? But what's the what problem? You need more there's like, no restaurants food, and there's stuff? There's Mr. Yeah. Chow. Yeah, yeah. There's fucking, what else there's do you like need? eight things. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, that's fair. They have a Taco Bell. What else do you need? <laughs> but there's some just beautiful. I mean, I mean, Malibu is ridiculous. I think if you're in Malibu, like you probably have like a chef. Yeah, if certain, you have a certain chef, that's great. Certain neighborhoods. Um, I'm into it. I want to hate on it and make jokes, but like I'm into it. And I think if it's you just have a the really money, big gated community. Yeah, go do your own thing and yeah. clone babies. They want to basically. 
run out this project and basically say like, hey, we just did this. Can we replicate this in other cities? Yeah, that's that is not happening. They're not going to let a bunch of weirdos. I don't think they're, they're actually not doing it for profit. What's the difference between this no, and like? No, they're doing Jones it for club. profit. They're doing it for I don't control. Think any of the people actually no, they, think they're, they're making the next their Facebook. Yeah, they're, they're doing it to control their environment. But aren't they doing it that's as like a test to see if they can create a better society with their rules? Yeah, because ours is yeah, broken. Yeah, because San Francisco is terrible. What's the difference between this and Yellowstone? <coughs> Yellowstone Club. I mean, it's cold as fuck there. That's the problem. True, but like, is it just a really nice neighborhood, or is it like Yellowstone Club's nice? I know, I know, I know but there's <laughs> like you, you put it like this: you grew, let's say you grew, you know, children grew up in Yellowstone Club. Yeah, they're even morons. Why? Yeah. I. I promise just in like you. the weird sheltered world you're saying? Yeah, they're just living, oh, we're going to hunt buffalo and we're going to eat like a caveman. Well, you're you're fucking morons. The buffalo's like, hunted. Yeah, I'm just, I'm telling you, there's no one, trust me, if those people thought it was better to live in Yellowstone Club, they would all have left. They'd know it's better to live next to Stanford than live next to Yellowstone. I think they live in both places. I, but I'm saying is, is they still went and bought $800 million of land. I think it's for fun. I think it's sport. But is it the same as like a really, really nice neighborhood or yeah. is it like more, is there going to be like police stations? And yeah, I think what they're trying to do from what I've read and what I know is basically like, can we build a Our city? Our own society. What's that? Our own society. Can we build a society with normal people and see how they flourish? I mean, the names oh, are mentioned they want, are not normal no, people. No, they don't want billionaires to oh. live there. They're gonna put normies in normies there and That's just study gross. them like lab rats. Gross. Yeah, study them like I don't. I do not want to be in that society. Say, okay, do they steal from our CVS or yeah. only the market? Yes. Jason just goes and steals. <laughs> yeah, <shit. laughs> I do what I want. Okay, well, but so you're saying it doesn't look like anytime soon? Absolutely not. I think it's gonna be tough. Ten years. I mean, it's already been seven. Yeah. They've. Oh yeah. Not with your boy Gavin Newsom in charge. <laughs> Nothing's happening with this city. They should just sell this land now. Yeah, they should go back to the, Bill Gates now. <laughs> go back to like the Mongolia plan. Yeah, I think the Mongolia, think Mongolia plan is great. It's just cold. <laughs> Very cold. I've been there. It's negative 45. It's yeah. also like you're in a state that like kind of hates rich people at the moment. You know, yeah. like probably not. This is going to hate it on no matter what. Yeah, oh, this is a disaster. And, and, and the moment like the press really like, let's just say they started building. And they're like, oh, great. A bunch of rich people using normies as lab rats to fucking fund their weird idea. You know, like, yeah. it's going to get so conspiracy. Do you think it worked in, like, Minnesota? Yeah, because you could. I think you could hide it. Yeah. You could You could work with the city or the state and be like, hey, this is what I we're know, doing. But, Leave it, us alone. It, just take Yellowstone Club, for example. Most people don't know that exists. The only reason anyone even knows what Yellowstone is is the goddamn show. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I would never go there if it wasn't for the show. Now I want to go there. I saw the show. I was like, yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, but that doesn't, they don't show the club. No, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, if if everyone found out about all these discovery properties, they'd yeah. have a different view of the world. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, good luck, guys. I would love to hear what comes out of it. Yeah. yeah. Neil doesn't listen, but his wife does. So maybe she can give you some more insight. Give us some inside info. Yeah. Okay. What well, the secret city looks like. Let me know. Maybe there's some golf courses there. Oh, oh no, I forgot it's normies. It's not, it's not the rich people. No, it's normies. He, it's going to be 100% rich people. Course. No one people. No, 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 like, oh, fuck it. You guys just want to build houses? Yeah, fuck it. They're going to be like, uh, what do we need? We need one golf course <laughs> per person, right? <laughs> but I think that like if you're a, like this is what it sounded like from the Peter Thiel thing is like if you're, you know, quote unquote, really smart, really successful, had success building companies. I think the next thing that you start to wonder is, could I build a better because like a company is kind of like a mini society. Yeah. You know, there's rules, there's punishment, there's whatever. Could I could I build a new society? So so I like, think the problem with that idea is that. And I don't think any of our politicians are this anymore. I think they probably were 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, companies or founders of companies are not empathetic to their people like potentially a city council person in a local community are. Like, I know like we shit on politicians a lot, but like, you know the person like that's a city council in a small town that basically does it. They're also a teacher and they do it. Yeah. That person actually <clears throat> gives a shit about their neighborhood. Yeah. The person that is, you know, the mayor of a large city has an agenda. They're they're looking for that, their that, next. That's career. actually how I view a view of Vivek Ramaswamy. To be honest, like objectively, 
Forget his politics. But that's everybody running for president. I just see him as this guy that doesn't give a shit, but he knows he's so fucking smart and talented. Yeah. And he's like, I can just run this game. And he actually doesn't care. You didn't, but Gavin actually, Newsom is the same thing. No, no, but I actually, actually, you think Joe the Biden opposite personally? was Barack Obama's different. He actually gave a fuck. It seemed like it. Yeah. He was a community organizer yeah. that just rose to the ranks and was like, I want to change. Whether he did or not, you can debate that sure. for decades. Yep. But he did it for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that Vivek Ramaswamy is doing it for the right reasons. I this think he's doing it for power. Yeah, of course. Well, Wes is anyone. But don't you think president? old Gavin is too? Gavin, hundred percent. He's just a real Gavin. No, yeah. but I said I just have to vote liberal values because yeah. I want my federal yeah. judges to have liberal values. Yeah. You guys ain't getting no judges. They're all done. Trumpy it, and it, it got them all. I know. <laughs> that's my point. I'm not saying he's the solution. In Forty years when all of these Supreme Court judges die, that's when you need to vote for a Democrat. No, yeah. federal judges matter too, dude. They change the gun laws. They change the abortion laws in every state i know but you need supreme of course but that's called the he's... supreme <laughs> yeah <laughs> supreme True. that's the ju- that's the court that, you need that job's locked up yeah <laughs> you got it they brett got kavanaugh it. all he's doing is drinking a couple beers he's gonna last like yeah. 50 years yeah. you think he's drinking bud light <laughs> hell no, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> over my dead body okay well we'll see uh Anna will be the first to get the inside info and yeah, I was allowed to talk about it publicly. I didn't think I was. All right. Oh, they said, he said he didn't care. He's like, please talk about it. I don't <laughs> think that's the right decision. <laughs> I don't think he should be letting us talk about it. I mean, they I might. think they should hide this fucking thing. Don't, especially in if California. If I was going to create a secret society, I, I wouldn't want anyone to know. But you realize the narrative in the country right now is rich people take Elites. all the rich stuff north of Richmond and they control all of us. Yeah. And they want to build a city that explicitly does that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't, I think oh, we should hide it. get Oliver Anthony or whatever his name is in the city. Yeah. His fake accent. I think you his should hide fake it. Accent. He should be the mayor of the city. That'd be a good publicity That's move. a good move. Yeah, but move it sounds like to- he can't be bought. <laughs> I heard Bud Light offered him some money too. He said no. Anyway, um, the most expensive zip code in America. There's an article here. Uh, that's inside the most expensive zip code in America. Yeah. What is the most expensive zip code in America? Palm Beach, Florida or something? I was surprised because I, I would have guessed, given kind of what's happened, it would have been um, Palm Beach or somewhere in Florida. Yeah. It's Newport Coast. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Oh, like Orange County. Yeah. Wow. So there, I mean, the amount of some house just sold for 60 some plus million dollars, the amount of homes like in that price range is kind of wild that's small community i mean if you ever you, you go to pelican hill yeah. like those houses in those communities trump yeah. is a big trump golfer no comment <laughs> trump's expensive to yeah. play at trump national which <laughs> isn't newport it's um palace Verdes. yeah is and it's public six hundred dollars what for four people or for one so you guys are paying twenty four hundred? No, that's I at, don't go. It's Trump. What? That's at Trump Palace Verdes. I mean, I have went. No, it's but it's not person. my regular. I know, time. but he goes to Pelican it. Hill. How much is Pelican Hill? Two hundred. That's per person. Crazy too. That's crazy, but that's like crazy. That's like the high well, end. What's like a LA one? How much are these LA courses? Seventy five bucks. Like Angels Crest. Yeah, well, cabs. Abs- no, Asian but club. the member pays Country for club. it. Yeah. Um, there's 75 bucks for like, you know, not none, none of the country clubs. Yeah. yeah. The, I'm saying like no wood. I don't know. But the, <laughs> like, like, um, Angeles national yeah, yeah, Angeles. is some, it's considered expensive. That's like 120 bucks yeah. and that's considered really expensive. Okay. So really, really expensive is Pelican Hill, which is like two, two fifty. Trump is literally like if you look right now to book a tea time on next Saturday, it's probably six hundred and fifty dollars. Is it based on the day or Yeah. Okay. You could probably go on like a Tuesday morning for like two hundred. I like dynamic pricing. I'm a yep. big fan of dynamic pricing. A lot of golf courses do that, I think. I think restaurants should do that. You wanna go Saturday night cheesecake factory? I agree. Guess what? That fucking cheesecake is forty dollars. I totally agree. I agree because I mean it would also help the business so much. Yeah. 
the, your slow times, that well, place will be full. Yeah, and why do you want to line out the door on Saturday? It's not a good experience for them. It's not a good experience for the staff. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, almost everything like that. Should have dynamic pricing. I agree. Okay, well, Trump's got to figure it out, you know, once again. <laughs> you know, the one thing he knows is the economy. <laughs> um, All right, let's just wrap it up. Okay, what's, what's this say out. about Newport, though? What? Like, what's this say about it? Anything interesting? Yeah, it, it just says... It's just expensive It's just such a small community that, like, the amount of homes on the coast that have yeah. the ocean view... I mean, these houses in this article are ridiculous. We the, should ask Kevion about it. I think that's, like... He he actually invited me to a home once he was selling. In Newport? In Newport yeah. on the coast. It was, like, 35... It was insane. Yeah. And it was, like, walk down to the beach, like... Just real quick so I understand, because you guys know this stuff so well. Like, the schools down there are great. Newport has really good public schools. And so that lifestyle is just, you live in your, like, $30 million home on the beach. It's a bubble. Your kids go to a great school. Yeah. It is very bubbly. Yeah. It feels like a different world when you're down yeah. there. Yeah. And, and that's just your nice... Yeah, like, you know... Everyone's rich. Yeah, your husband might... Fuck your best friend, the neighbor. Yeah, whatever. Like that's yeah. part of it. But and the like, wife might, uh, you know, mess with the trainer. Strip the. It's like a lot of trainer but, sex yeah, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. 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 trainer sex. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even some rich like swingery type stuff. I think it's swinger I, I and actually, trainer. I have a rich yeah, a comment to make. Um, huh. At uh, Dominic and uh, Miles' birthday today, he has some very wealthy friends. Shoe brands. I saw three of three of his wealthiest friends. Yep. Can you guess them? I know what it is. All I, no, not you. Is All Birds still a thing? No, 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 no. no. It's Hoka? only one brand. No, no. It was three different brands. It was three of shoes. Of shoes, and I know who they are. And he, obviously, you guys both know who they are. And I was very. I actually took okay. A, so what are the brands? Minute. What are the brands? Spit it out, Drummond. Tell me. What do you think? I'm kind of blanking. If it's not, so All Birds is out. Yeah. Out. Obviously, these rich guys aren't wearing Crocs. No. Nope. Solomon. Oh, Solomon, easy. And on New easy. Balance. Yeah. It was like literally one, Didn't two, three. That. Yeah. See some New Balances in the room here. Yeah. Yeah. I should have known that. It's a uniform. Solomon's really fascinating because it's like an it was an obscure hiking. Yeah, French hiking. Brand. Yeah, that just blew up. Yeah. Apparently, they got a new creative director. That's the story I heard. Yeah, they it did. kind of spiced it up, and then all of a sudden, the but shoes that's are really probably good. why Nike has so much inventory. No one's wearing Nikes. Literally, zero people were at this party wearing Nike. It's yeah. kind of it's wild. all like dads around our age that we normally would wear Nike. Yeah, the dads are wearing on. They should on just Solomon put their New excess Balance. inventory I'm wearing in New Balance. CVS. Yeah, be gone tomorrow. Yeah, Nike should just sell their shoes to CVS. Yeah, they literally just be <laughs> it gone. It was so It'll funny disappear. because I actually watched. I was like. I had this like mental picture. I was like, oh shit. I should have, yeah. The three was... guys. On really just captured the rich guys. Yeah. They own quickly. rich guys. They own rich guys. And is I... Allbirds just like. Yeah, Allbirds dead. is done. Dead, 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 dead. No one's wearing Allbirds. It's embarrassing. I think they're wearing in suburbia. They could sponsor Sing Like a Bird. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by Losiato and Allbirds. <laughs> yeah. They want to pay us. We'll wear them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Shout outs. I'm really curious about this last topic, though. All right, fine. Okay, so here's how much exercise <laughs> you should be doing each day, says an expert. It's less than you think. How much is it? So it basically said that you should do cardio aerobic exercise two hours and 20 minutes a week. So basically 21, 20, you know, 20 some odd minutes a day is enough. What type of heart rate? Zone two, they say. Let me see if they say zone two. That's a what is this like? Yeah, I know. Term? Uh, I'm, I've been following the Peter Atia stuff. Yes, yeah, so they're big on zone two. Yeah, zone two, you have to do that like 30, 40 minutes a day. Yeah, that's and apparently then, the key to true cardio. And then zone three, where you can't talk. So it's it said, can you talk when you're doing cardio? Yes. That's zone two. If yep. you can't talk, it's zone three. Yep. Or uh, zone, there's even zone four. Okay, it says 85. 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. Moderate intensity. Didn't say zone. Uh, I'll tell you. 60 to 70 zone two. Okay. 70 to 80 zone three. It means you cannot talk. No, zone two you can talk. Zone, two zone you can three talk. you cannot. 60 to 70 you can have but a conversation. They're telling you 
what is your Zohan saying? Not Zohan, Peter Adia. What? Zohan saying China's <laughs> done in nine years. Yes. Peter Adia is different. He's trying to help us not be done in nine years. Okay. Through Zone Two. I look. I, there's I just think all you the rage. If you do Zone Two, you're good. Look, all the rage in like um, Cardio Land is like whatever it is, thirty minutes, uh, five days a week of Zone Two heart rate training, which is like literally, if I jogged as light as I can jog, I would probably go into Zone Three. Okay. So it's like you. I could be on the phone with you. I could have a conversation the whole time, but you could probably tell I was doing something. Out of a little out of breath, but not like I can still talk. It could be running or it could be jerking off. We don't know. We don't know. It's one of the two. Yeah. Jerking off is probably zone two. <laughs> zone two. Uh, but it's hard to do that for 30 minutes. It's really hard. <laughs> jerking off is definitely zone two. Yeah, but 30 minutes is the tough it's part. It's more like 43 seconds. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stop and goes. But, um, and then like one day a week or something of, you know, all out exertion that's they're saying that that actually builds like if you're like a marathon runner or whatever that builds much stronger cardio than let's say i run all out three days a week until uh, I you know what i love more. about the peter okay. atia data that's come out is that exercise is number one yeah which what else is, is some, there no because Vaccines. people talk about data that, yeah. what'd you say Vaccines. <laughs> oh, and uh, you don't need to work out. For the record, Bronny had a congenital heart disease. Oh yeah, it's, it's not the vaccine. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, for the record, on. Nvidia on. also <laughs> had record sounds earnings. Like, sounds like fucking weave weave Coral factory. Weave. Yeah, put that out. Who put that out? Who paid for that fucking Black press Rock release? For that. Yeah, Blackrock. <laughs> Sackler. How many? How many? How many? Yeah, Sackler. <laughs> Brought to you by, by Sackler and Corwin. Our attorney Rudy <laughs> Giuliani put out the statement. <laughs> um, no, but it was it was it was a uh, very refreshing to hear. Like, hey, if you just get out and work yeah. and That's do your everything. thing, you get to live longer. And the crazy part is, it's not. It's not, it's not that, that crazy. intense. No, it's no. not that crazy at all. Like literally, for most people, if you did like a fast walk for thirty minutes a day, you're like. So a very I, I, I've had a hard time working out the last kind of six months. Yeah. But like if I'm up early and no one's awake, I will literally do 20, 25 minutes incline walk where yeah. I, I can't talk. Like I am huffing and puffing. That's, yeah. that's zone three. Yeah. You're and probably zone four. Yeah. I'm, you're zone four. And I, but, but like I four. feel it. Like I feel, I feel good. Yeah. That is definitely really good. I think the shocking thing when you look not to like... I'll be quick here because it's so nerdy and silly is like what we don't realize is cardio isn't like a, it's not like a max it out every day and then you can max it out for a little longer. And then like yeah. I can sprint for eight minutes. Now I can sprint for 10 minutes. Yeah. Now I can sprint for it's like building a baseline of this zone two type cardio actually builds a stronger cardiovascular vascular system that lets you go all out when the time is yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I I, that. It's, I, I, it's, it's I, I, more I, intricate than just. How much can you go on? I want to tease something. Um, he's going to come on the pod Monday night of Labor Day. So 9-4, right? Because we're not going to do Sunday. Yep. D's birthday, September yeah. 3rd. Yep. Yeah. Happy pre-birthday. Happy yeah. pre-birthday. Zohan. Uh, Zohan's, Zohan's coming. Uh, Zohan coming? Dr. Deepak Dugar is going to come on and talk about breathing and something he fixed for me. And we can talk about it. I'll, I'll just tease it. Okay. By the way, I Dr. Breathing. Deepak like someone that I like. Who's that? Someone running for president. Uh, I don't know if he does. <laughs> no. We're no. definitely talking about ah, that. Sounds like a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is like a very... Uh, we're still going to talk about that. We're, 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 we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> we're definitely talking about that. <laughs> All right. Edit that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in. Uh, um, but no, we're going to talk about breathing and what he fixed for my life. And he changed my life. Okay. Well, let's fucking breathe. I'm, Nine four. I'm in. You gave him enlarged his penis, and now he could breathe. Wow! <laughs> what Ari? Ari's giving me the wrap it up sign. This oh, guy. Oh wow! Okay, all right. Whoa. Fucking, what do you have a date? All right. This Shout guy out. is a. He has like a week left. He mm -hmm. yelled at me for touching the mic too much. 
What are I, we at hour wise? Jesus Christ. We're in an hour and a half. Okay. But our cares? Joe Rogan does three and a half. Yeah, yeah. well, you're no Joe Rogan. Oh. oh. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> he fired himself. You're fired. You have two weeks and then you're fucking out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, who? Shout outs. Shout two shout outs. Out. All right. Big happy birthday first to Jordan Harvey, who's been helping on the pod for a long time. To Somebody whose job accent. already stole. Yes. Happy 27th birthday. We love you, Jordan. Uh, next is from Marco Gonzalez to D Dramanan. I like that. Oh, shout out to us. Um, shout out to you three for keeping me entertained for the past couple of years. And shout out to my man, Jay Cha. Jay Cha. For introducing me to one of the best podcasts in the, the world. The best podcast in the world. From G Easy. Oh, wow. Is wow. it the rapper? Yep. To Niraj. He's a listener. I don't know if G Easy's friends with anyone named Niraj. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so either. He's from Oakland. Hey guys, uh, want to give a shout Oakland? out? Yeah. yeah, maybe it is. Hey guys, wanted to give a shout out to my brother Niraj. Today is his birthday. So a big happy birthday shout out. Also want to say congrats again on selling the restaurants. I'm pumped to see what comes next. I'm glad I was able to put you on to GCP, even though you're way behind and won't hear this for weeks. Thanks again for buying me the GCP trucker. Here's to an exciting and bright future. Love you long time. Woo. All right. From Jake Schlitchett to D and Ryan Tierney. Shout out to D for hooking up the Lo Siento for GG Playhouse 10th annual golf outing. Making sure it gets there on time. Group chat community is amazing. Last, from Joel Williams to Anand. Can you All please- All these shout outs are just to you two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're hot. <laughs> From Joel Williams to Anand, can you do a shout out to Anand on the pod? He has bent over backwards to help some friends of mine who his baby is suffering from seizures. He sent his personal number and put them in contact with his doctor at UCLA based in Sydney, Australia. He didn't have to answer my DM, but he has gone beyond. I owe the team a dinner if you're ever in Sydney. Shout out to Anand. You got us nice. a free dinner. No. It's amazing. I, I, uh, like it, the five years of, we, of of us doing this podcast, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That guy came from the DMs. Yeah, nice. That's great. Well, thanks well, for the dinner. You know, you did all the hard work, but I'll, I'll take probably the never be in Sydney. But thanks for the dinner. Sydney's yeah. a great place. No, but I'm I'm actually serious. Like, yeah. like this family is suffering from the same thing that Maverick mm -hmm. had yeah. suffered from, and currently kind of. I mean, he's in a great place. So mm -hmm. you know, Maverick. You know, I know people want to understand what Maverick's going through. He's doing he's doing very well right now. Mm -hmm. But their kid needs help. Yeah. And That's awesome. We're well, great. Help. Good for you. Well shout out to Anna. Yeah. Thanks for helping them. Um that's it. That is it. Okay, that's uh, all we got. We yeah, got no intro. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> right it's nice to just end it and be done with what it what is Ari yeah. gonna do are you gonna have sex or are you just pushing us hey, out hey Ari what's the rush you wanna tell the audience okay so we typically try to keep episodes at an hour and 30 but what if they're great we yeah aren't Who's we the we, we? we? yes <laughs> core weave hey <laughs> core weave you, you guys always for... try to keep episodes under an hour 30 and with the exception of a couple of episodes that had really long interviews the longest episode we've ever done or while during my tenure. Sounds like you're extending your interview and right 32. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what, I mean, is there any data to show that the people don't like long episodes when they're super awesome and we're talking about secret cities in San Francisco and really cool stuff? I couldn't tell you that. Okay. Well, it sounds like the people like us, you know, and they want more. So listen, audience, um, if you want longer episodes, comment fuck you, Ari, on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the, the next post on our Instagram. <laughs> Let's see. If not, uh, we'll keep them short. All right. Uh, that's it. Everyone have a great week. Uh, we'll see you later.